Hi everybody, it is the 1st of April 2021, but instead of one of those corny April Fools, we actually have a very nice surprise from DayZ, which is the announcement of the 1.12 experimental release. So this is a version of DayZ which will be going out to the PC uh, test or experimental servers, uh, servers and the Xbox experimental server as well. If you own DayZ on Xbox, uh, search for, I think it's DayZ Experimental, and you can download that for free. Unfortunately, not available on the PlayStation. This is a surprise. Didn't know it was coming. We knew there's updates coming in 2021. And this one, this one has some very exciting stuff in Deed for fans of Daisy. Uh, this has been written by Adam Franco. What we're going to do first is we're going to go through the go through like the uh, the blog post, and then we'll go through the patch notes as well. Here, so here we go. Greetings, survivors. We're happy to announce that the experimental build of Game Update 1.12 is live on Steam and Xbox. As usual, this article is not meant to provide a full overview of the build, but outline the areas we'd really like you to get the most feedback on. We'd love to hear from you, and you can share your experience on our official channels. Um, FT, forums, PC, and Xbox. There's lots to unpack with this one. Sorry, Wobo. Now, that is amazing. Wobo channel has got a direct link, a direct reference from a Daisy post. Now, if you don't know, Wobo is this amazing YouTube content creator who does lots of videos like um, a guide to weapon sounds and weapon damage and food and cold, all these things that look at the game mechanics and tell you how you can... Um, how you can play the game based on you know how the game works, but obviously when they change things, Wobo needs to do a new video. So superb there that they're, they're mentioning a, a Daisy creator. One of the most crucial elements we'd love to get feedback on are the combat changes. These changes affect both player versus inf infected and player versus player scenarios. We want to make fights with infected more dangerous and slower, i.e., stealthier approaches more rewarding. The following list outlines the changes made to player versus infected combat. The infected attack much faster and their attacks are harder to interrupt, depending on which weapon is used against them. Melee attacks on the infected are much more consistent when it comes to the number of hits needed to take one down. Most of the bullets have a stopping effect on the infected, causing them to struggle every time they get hit. The infected senses and various noise sources are to tweaked to promote a stealthy approach. Stealthy takedowns of the infected are now much more consistent to execute and are possible with a variety of sharp melee weapons. Suppressed weapons no longer aggravate the infected as quickly, depending on the weapon caliber used. The infected no longer engage unconscious players, giving them a second chance. Interacting with doors will warn the infected located within the vicinity i.e. produces noise from the AI. So there's some really exciting things. I can't wait to try these out. I'm kind of I know I'm envisioning the stealth takedown kills from State of Decay 2 where you can creep up behind zombies and you can, you know, grab them and they struggle and you cut their throat or chop their head off and then they then they die. Um, it's probably gonna be like that. But it should mean that you can hopefully you know, stealth your way through villages and towns where at the moment if you get into a fight with a zombie, unless you take them out with one hit they'll go Bruh, and then they'll they'll aggro all the zombies around and then you know you've got a big fight in your hands so that is really really cool the f also they're saying look zombies are going to be a bit more dangerous you know it's, when they're hitting you Bruh, it's going to be more difficult to interrupt their animation i guess as they're hitting you um and i like the idea of if you hit them with a bullet they kind of stagger um, um and more consistent so lo really looking forward to playing with that and the fact that doors um, will now uh, trigger AI behavior as well because it all makes sense. Then the doors make a nice brrr, you open a door, zombie, brrr, you know, knows what's going on. The following list contains the main changes made to player versus player combat, where the focus is on bringing more diversity between individual weapons, a rebalance of ammunition, and having the combat end more in an unconscious state, thereby giving people who are wearing protective gear a second chance. So again, this is stuff the community has asked for for an awful long time. So they've done a major pass on weapon properties such as dispersion, durability and recoil with factors such as magazine size and type, internal, external, ammo type, weapon inventory size, suppression or not and rarity in the world. Poor old Wobo is going to <laughs> he's gonna have to look at his um, weapon accuracy and what is the best um, weapon. Major balancing pass on ammunition 
where we looked at the initial damage, health and shock, how fast it changes values during flight, and how much it loses once it goes through the target. We have also taken rarity into account, making sure the stronger it is, the rarer it is, already part of the 1.11 loot rebalance. Bullet impacts dealing heavy shock will now cause the player's character to stumble, losing mobility for a short period of time. So, yeah. So the idea is you bang, you get hit by a heavy caliber bullet. So you wear, but you're wearing a bulletproof vest. You know, you, you, your character will, will 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 stumble. Gear with ballistic properties reduces damage to health more than before, thus allowing for more firefights to end in an unconscious state. So the idea is that you lose health. So you get you you get knocked out basically if you get hit by a large caliber bullet. You know, in the chest, and you're wearing a you know a ballistic vest. You won't die, or maybe if you're wearing like a, a ballistic helmet, you get hit in the head with a ballistic hel- uh, a bullet with a ballistic helmet, as you would expect it to do. It's not going to kill you, but it's going to knock you out, which is really good. Firearm shot audibility has been adjusted for pistols at 250, SMGs and shotguns up to 800 meters, ARs up to 2,000 meters, and big caliber rifles up to 3,500 meters. We also made a balancing pass over landmines, and they are no longer lethal to healthy players. Instead, their goal is to cripple players via an unconscious state and broken leg. Lethal disarm action has been removed, and disarming is now possible with sharp tools, with varying chances of accidental destination. If successful, the landmine will be ruined, i.e. unusable. Interesting. Um, It's a good idea. Um... The, the catch is, of course, um, defending bases, isn't it, with landmines? Um, if if they're not lethal, you know, and people can, you know, can um, disarm them, then uh, they're not quite as powerful, are they? We've taken a deeper look at the nutritional values of all edible items and made a balancing pass on them. Things we took into account were the size of the inventory, the quantity itself, the fullness factor, the differences between cooking stages, and whether the item requires a tool to open. In addition to this, there is now a large gap between a stuffed stomach and a vomit threshold, thereby offering longer time to react and stop eating. Which is good, because when they did change it, it always felt like if you're eating a lot of food, your stomach would be full, and then straight away, bleh, your character would be would be sick. But hopefully they've taken it back to how it was before, in the fact that you would have this gap between, oh, my stomach's full, right, stop eating, and you wouldn't be sick. As a part of this food rebalance, we've also adjusted the distribution of edible items in the centrally economy setups. This pass also included the addition of a variety of new edible items. The only one I know about is the potato, but this potato is one you have to peel. But more of that in a second. Speaking of food, here we go. This is so exciting. Speaking of food, farming has received a number of updates. Farming is once again possible inside the greenhouses and polytunnels. Fantastic. It was always mental, wasn't it? You would be wandering around Chernarus or Livonia or any of the other maps and you would be like, oh, nice greenhouse. And when you were new to the game, you were like, oh, surely this is where you would grow stuff. And in fact, I remember when I created the private servers, I'd made these challenges up. And one of the challenges was to grow stuff inside the greenhouses, even though you couldn't do it. Well, now you can. Greenhouses offer 9 slots where polytunnels offer 13. You can start farming in these by using the appropriate tool to dig slots. Well done, Adam. This is top stuff. Plants grow slower. Excellent. Have to have very growth times and yields depending on fertilization materials. Potatoes can now be grown. To eat potatoes, they need to be peeled first. Fantastic stuff. A major overhaul of the server connection and kick messages has been made to improve the feedback the game offers the user and server owner when it comes to issues dealing with connection, both during the connection process and during gameplay. Over 100 messages have been added with the code system in place. There's a lot more new stuff to discover this update, but where would the fun be in revealing everything? The experimental servers are up and running now, so head on out and do some exploring. But if you're truly eager to know every last detail, then do yourself a favour and check out our official change logs. So, Let's go over to the change logs. We'll look at the Xbox ones and see what they've got to say. So, game added. Variety of small food items. So there's new food items in the game. The Pioneer Rifle. The Experimental Capsule. <laughs> the Fange Knife. Fange Knife. The Cookery Knife. That's the Gurkha Knife, isn't it? The Sickle. 
the farming hoe, the broom. We're finally getting a broom in the game. New action to some land mines with the right tool. Tritium sites to the ATOG backup sites. So that must mean they it probably glows green or something like that. You can now plant and grow potatoes. You now have to peel potatoes to make them edible. Well, I, I'm fairly sure though that raw potatoes aren't particularly good for you. You should have really have to cook them. Greenhouses can now be used for agriculture. Oh, brilliant. Flags can now be cut into rags using a knife. Vehicle batteries are now recharged while the engine is running and consumed by the headlights, which makes sense because that's what the alternator does. It charges up the battery. Vehicle attachments can now be locked in place using a screwdriver, interiors, tie round wheels and wrench doors. Oh, that's interesting. That's very, very interesting. So when you've got your car, you screw it all together or use the tie round and wrench and then they'll, you can't just you can't just take them off. Somebody just can't come along and nick your wheels just by dragging them off. You need a tool to take them off, which again, makes sense. Tool tips for attachment slots. Empty attachment slots are highlighted when focused. Added over 100 new error codes. Right, let's go past the fix stuff. Guess what we're bothered about. Changed. The warning for a full stomach will be displayed earlier before reaching the threshold for vomiting. Rebalance nutrition values, inventory sizes, and how filling each edible item is. Farming actions have been moved from plants to plant slots for easier targeting. Okay, all plants now have different growth times between 20 to 50 minutes. It's a lot longer, isn't it? It used to be like 15 minutes, then it for everything. Adjusted nutrition values of horticulture vegetables according to their growth time. Right, so if something takes longer to grow, it's going to have better nutrition. Fertilizing now increases the yield of plants instead of their growth time. Interesting. Increase the chance for plant infestation. Make sure you've got that. Um, uh, that is that squeezy bottle isn't there is it i can't remember what they call it plants will spoil after a while when being fully grown again that's it's more realistic isn't it because i know for 1.10 i think i had some tomato plants that lasted the entire wipe <laughs> i just kept eating them um slicing a pumpkin now yields two pumpkin slices the worse the condition of a vegetable the fewer seeds it will give when cut excellent unpacking seeds now spawns paper Rebalanced ammunition types. The friction of bullets has been increased to make the difference between ammunition types more visible. Increase the penetration of high caliber ammunition. Heavy impact rounds slow down the player and apply more shock damage. Efficient ballistic rounds keep the speed and therefore the bullet energy and resulting damage longer and are thus more efficient at long distance. The, the, the uh, 380 and the 545 by 39 are the weakest in their character but are found more often in the world. Special types. 22 is used by peculiar weapons, the Mark II that is integrally suppressed and the Sporter that is an almost recallless precision semi-auto rifle. 12 gauge rubber slug deal extreme shock damage at close range. 12 gauge buckshot slow down much more. The typical speed of bullets has been adjusted to be equal to the initial speed. Tempering will be reintroduced later. Okay, modern firearms require more maintenance when used. Adjusted the audible range of firearm shots based on the calibre they use. Increased the precision of pistols, sawned off rifles, bolt action rifles, hunting and sniper rifles. Decreased the precision of assault rifles. Yeah, because there was this strange thing where actually the best sniper rifle in the game was actually like the KA-74, I think, or something like that. Again, you'd have to watch the Wobo video. Melee damage using impractical items is now weaker than fists. Right, so I guess if you're trying to melee someone with a map in your hand, it's not going to work. Slightly increased fist damage. Increase the damage most tools to be more efficient than fists in combat. Players are no longer targeted by infected while unconscious, so you'll be able to survive a zombie attack. Light melee attacks have a lower chance of staggering infected Blunt melee weapons with higher shock damage have a higher chance to stagger infected. Infected are now tougher in combat, so I wonder if the axe will still be a one-hit kill. Melee attacks on infected are now more consistent in terms of the number of attacks required to take one down. Improved efficiency of backstabbing against infected. Executed with sharp weapons. Ah, now, I, want, I, wonder, I wonder if they've done something like... It's just the fact that if you attack a zombie from behind, you do it doing more damage with a sharp weapon. 
I wonder if they've done it like that. Infected now react to players interacting with doors. Infected react less to suppress shots. Infect up, infected give up searching for players faster. That's better because they are zombies while they're infected. Reduce the efficiency of the scream of the infected. AI is no longer taking damage from damage zones. Fireplace and barbed wire. Landmines can no longer be disarmed using the bear trap, killing the player in the process. Matchboxes can now be combined but not split. When focusing on a specific part of a car, base, building object, etc., the name of that specific section will be displayed in the widget. Reduce the audible range of the reload sounds by 50%. When having your when having your hands ha handcuffed with barbed wire, struggling can now cause bleeding. You can now choose to stop an ongoing connection attempt and connect to the currently selected server instead. Lightning is now lighting up the environment for a bit longer. Vehicle batteries with metal wires attached can no longer be placed in cargo. Burning road flares can be destroyed by placing them in a fireplace. You can only gain extra rewards from fishing when fishing in calm waters. I think that means things like the boots. Adjusted Christmas lights on tents to be lighter on performance. Updated the credits. Central economy. Added the 15 round SG5K Mac to the spawn in the world and attached to the weapon. Increased the amount of food spawning at the spawn areas in the, and in the center of the maps. Good. Reduce the amount of food spawning in high tier areas. Good. Increase the spawn of um, 380 and 545 by 39 ammunition. Increase the chance of weapons to spawn with magazines. Sounds like one of my mods. Police infected are now spawning near police cars. Again, that's another one of my mods. Adjusted loot spawns in the greenhouses. And we've got some server stuff as well. Brilliant. So this is another top class update, isn't it? really good um zombies more dangerous um you're more likely to get unconscious in a fight with people or zombies so you're more likely to, to be able to survive and fight again but most importantly most importantly we can now grow food in greenhouses so what do you think this will be coming to the full servers i guess in the next couple of weeks and um, once they've got some feedback and done some more testing um, put your questions and comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, hit like. If you want to see more of the same, press subscribe. And I will, of course, see you again soon.